name is Diane Lenning, and I'm running for California Superintendent of Public Instruction because I care about our kids and our grandkids' future. I'm here tonight to win your support to help me do that because I can't do it alone. But as an educator for over 30 years, I do know what to do to fix our schools. And one of the things I know we need is parental support. We need parents to work right along with us teachers. Now, with an upside down society that we have today, with up, upside down economy and upside down educational system, I know what to do to fix our schools. As a teacher for over 30 years, having worked in various districts, and also for eight years in the California Youth Authority, there are no surprises for me. I know uh, along with just about any other teacher you could ask, what we believe would be the, the plan for fixing our schools. Legislative members and union has been trying to do this for 30, 40 years. What we have seen instead is our schools go from number one, when I and some of the rest of you attended public schools here, down to number eight, 48. I was gonna say eight. 48. <laughs> 48 is just so phenomenal that that has happened in our lifetime. It's just hard to believe. Now, I know that you are all looking and hoping for some answers of what to do. With a dropout rate of 50% in the state of California, we have 60 to 70% dropout rate in some of the schools in Los Angeles. I looked up the stats. And we need to do better for our kids and for their future. And it also affects our society, our economy. We need to have a good quality education to help them to compete. Now, what can we do to help our young people rather than drop out? Well, one of the things we can do is to provide vocational education again. Many students want to have a job right after high school. They're really not interested in going to college. Now, I was listening on the radio the other day, and a young woman was saying why she dropped out. Well, the partying scene was just so much fun. Well, believe it or not, that really was a big problem where I taught. I used to, uh, to pick up the party flyers and let our police officer on campus know, and they broke up quite a few of those parties and handled that problem because kids get so involved in other things rather than focusing on education. We need to make sure we have a safe campus where our young people will not be afraid to attend school. Now, I taught at an at-risk high school as well. Maybe not as difficult as yours, but we had numerous lockdowns, numerous bomb threats, violence. I attended three of my students' funerals that I had in my classes, and we look at those. And so violence is pervasive throughout the state of California, even in Orange County where I taught. It's important that our young people feel safe when they attend school. We spent two to three weeks every year in counseling for the aftermath from violence. Many kids, rather than face that, just stay home. Many kids just cannot deal with the pressures of attending a school. Now, campuses, especially high school campuses, are one of the highest crime rate segments in our society today. One of the things we can do is make sure that we have at least two police officers on every campus, which we did in our district. We started that around 2000, and we immediately saw an upswing of attendance, of focusing and engaged learning, and in 2006, with a district-led plan, we won the National Eli Broad Award for the most improved student scores in the nation from Orange County. So I know, having worked in all the areas that I've worked at, every young person can improve if given the good circumstances. And if you and I as parents can take back more local control and not depend on these Band-Aid fixes that some of the legislative members have tried to do, we can fix it. We can change it. Personally, I believe the legislature is too far removed from what's really happening in our schools because much of what happens in our schools, we don't talk about. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important for teachers to work together with parents and to gain more local control. Also, we need to really help Los Angeles Unified with their financial budget. 
They are out of control in mismanagement of their finances. Uh, someone told me they spend somewhere around 45 to 55 percent of their money on administrative costs. <laughs> Is it actually more? Many well qualified, well running districts only spend 15 percent or so on administrative costs. And many people have been telling me some ways we can do that. One of the ways we can do it is to reduce the dropout rate. Every year, our students under 18 who have dropped out cost us $1.1 billion in crime-related expenses. Just think if we could use that to educate them instead. And then many of those young people are incarcerated where I taught. So, and often it costs more for the expenses of incarceration than it does to educate them. So if we, if we provide a quality plan, a quality place to provide an education for our young people, we are going to start seeing improvement. And another way we can do that, if you would look online at petersprocedures.com, you can see how Jean Via Peters has a plan in which to empower teachers with how to bring success to undisciplined students. Again, that's petersprocedures.com. It's a, a climate environmental plan, which many of us good teachers use anyway without a plan. I, I used my own version of it. And that was to require good classroom etiquette that required respect of others and engagement in their curriculum. But in order to do that, you need the support of the rest of the faculty, faculty working together and the administrative uh, support from your campus as well as at the district level. Now our district had a plan that helped each one of us teachers throughout the district for a pacing program. We started with English, then we went to math, and then to science. Because what happens sometimes is young people as they move from one school to another, or even from one class to another within the school, could be at a different portion in the curriculum and thereby miss some of the curriculum needed in order to pass the exam. And then we also gave quarterly benchmark exams within our district. Then we also administered the statewide casing, the California High School exit exam. And I was one of those who administered that exam. And I believe it has some validity, although people believe it's controversial. What it does do is provide a minimum competency level for young people who graduate. So the young people and people in business will know basically what skills the young people have when they come out. We have found that businesses are having to re-educate many of our young people because they don't have a high enough level of education to be able to work or compete in the economy and in the business market. And we're finding that those countries around the world, such as China and Japan and many others, are surpassing us. And so we have our work cut out for us. And it's not going to happen in one year, but we can start right away by meeting with the local uh, district and county district superintendents. I have a survey in mind that I will take questions from them as to what are the three or four issues each year we'd like to focus on. Another important item for safety that I didn't mention yet was schools need the ability to have a closed perimeter. We had gauge chain link fences and gates that we could close within a few minutes and have a successful lockdown to keep violence out and our kids safe. So these are important issues that we can start on right away, even if we don't have much money. Now someone asked me, well, what will you do about the money? Well, I will need to focus on what we can do to fix education. I'm happy to work with the legislature to help enliven our economy again. But basically, I believe the last 20 years, our legislature has driven business out of the state, along with many of our taxpayers who help pay the bills. So to me, that's up to people who are running for office, many of you here tonight, and you will, I'm sure, address those issues. There are at least 100 items that we could address, but I talked about the few top issues tonight that I believe will make a big difference within a year or two because I saw it make a big difference in our district, so much so that we became a national winner.